One of the most common questions that we get around corn microgreens is why we don't introduce them into the light. So today what we wanted to show you guys is growing corn in light versus growing them in blackout and what effects that that will have on both of the crops. As you've seen in the past, I have grown corn quite a few times and I've definitely got a few goofy videos around this. But corn is one of those crops that it's just so much fun to grow, though it can be very sweet and it's not for all people, it is a fun one to add to desserts and also put a little bit into salads every once in a while. So let's talk about what we've done so far. Here in front of me, I have two trays of corn microgreens. Each one of these trays has been seeded with 210 grams of yellow popcorn per tray. We did not soak these seeds. We only put it underneath a layer of cocoa core, which really helped these seeds germinate. As you can tell in front of me, we got a lot of corn coming up. Now, what is going to be different about these? One of these trays is going to go directly on our shelf over here underneath these three lights. The other one is gonna go underneath this blackout dome, just like this for the entire duration of this grow. The reason why we use a dome like this is because it allows the crop to get very tall without getting any light. Plus it also has these little vent holes at the top. So that way during blackout, we don't run into issues with mold. Now for this dome, we actually made this ourselves out of a humidity dome. And we're gonna add a clip at the end of this video showing you exactly how you can make one too. And as you can see, if I hold up to light, you really can't see much light at all coming through this. And that's exactly what you want. Another thing is make sure these holes are open whenever you put this on top, just like this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one, put it on my shelf that has no lights on, and that way it can remain in blackout. This tray, I'm going to place it over here underneath these three 20 watt LEDs. Over the next few days, I'll be here giving you guys a corny update and we'll see what's going on with both of these. Today is day five of our corn and I'm gonna pull the one off the shelf that was under the light because I already have my blackout one right here. And we're gonna take a peek at look and see what we have going on. So first off, there are two major differences here. One being the height. These are definitely a lot more behind on height than these ones are, which makes complete sense because these are in blackout, which means the plant is stretching up trying to find light. So there is a difference there and there's also a difference in the color. Usually we keep corn in blackout so that way it gets a much sweeter taste, but we put these ones into light where they're starting to become green and they kind of remind me a little bit of Shrek ears. <laughs> Something else that we have been noticing is corn because it is in blackout and the seed itself tends to get a little bit moldy. We've noticed that we've had areas where we've had to go through and just spot treat a little bit. You can kind of see it there, that little bit of spider web looking stuff that is mold and it's completely okay as long as we keep up with it and make sure it doesn't get out of control. Well, that is it today for this quick little update. I'll see you guys in a few days whenever it's ready for harvest day. Today is day six of our corn grow and I already have my one that was underneath the light sitting here and I'm going to remove the lid from this one and you can see that there is a massive difference here. These are much bigger than these ones over here, which makes complete sense because these were stretching for light. But as from yesterday, these have already begun to kind of open up more and they're not so closed in and they are starting to appear a little bit bigger. What I also want to go over with here is this tray, it looks beautiful but it is a fail. The reason is, is because if you kind of pull this canopy back, you see all that stringiness in there? That is mold. And the thing with this mold is it's past the point of spot treating. This is something that I wanted to use this video for is to take a moment and discuss this. Whenever you start to see that much mold on a tray, toss it out. There's no point in spot treating anymore. It's gonna to continue to get worse because you're adding water on top of it to help spot treat. Something that you could do is place this out into the sun because the UV rays will help to kill that mold. But because this is a blondie crop and we don't want it to get green, we can't do that. You want this to stay in complete blackout or it's gonna end up looking like these over here and they're not gonna be as soft and sweet as they would be in the blondie stage. So something to be aware of is whenever you are doing the blondie microgreens, you just have more of a chance to create the perfect environment for mold because mold loves dark, humid, and just no airflow. And whenever we have this underneath the humidity dome, we're restricting the airflow, it's in blackout, 
and there was humidity created. What we think happened is we maybe overwatered it one day and that one day was just enough to send this into complete overdrive and now we see all that craziness going on underneath there. But the good news is, is we can still continue this experiment. The only thing I'm not going to be doing is taste testing this because I don't want to risk potentially hazarding myself. Hazarding? <laughs> But luckily I've done enough corn videos that I already know exactly what this tastes like. So now let's just go ahead and move over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna pull two of these real quick so we can taste test. First, I'm gonna hand them to CJ so he has a little bit. And now I'm gonna grab a couple for myself. Wow, okay, no, <laughs> I do not like that. Excuse all the faces, that was just a whole journey of flavor. The biggest difference here is this is sweet, but so freaking bitter that it just really isn't pleasant at all. And that makes complete sense because we have this in the light. Now, if I were to taste test these over here, I know that this is gonna be so incredibly sweet that I'll probably still make similar faces, but more enjoyable because it has a much pleasanter taste than whenever you have that super bitterness hit your tongue. <laughs> One of the things you'll notice with corn is it just tends to have that artificial sweetener flavor to it. So it's definitely not for everyone. I like sweets and this is even too sweet for me sometimes, but it does look absolutely beautiful whenever you pair it with certain foods like desserts or even put a little bit into a salad. Another thing that I wanna discuss is the big difference here too, besides flavor is overall texture. These are gonna be a lot softer to chew and these over here are gonna be a lot more fibrous because they have that time underneath the light and they're really starting to develop as a crop. I just wanted to show you guys what the difference is between having your corn in light and having it in blackout. And obviously there is a big difference here. So I really hope that this was helpful. Even though we did have a little bit of a fail, it was also a good point to talk about mold and when it has gone too far. I almost forgot one important thing. If you do get your blondies to harvest day, be sure to keep them in complete blackout even after you harvest them or they will end up looking like these. So that is it for this video, guys. If you like this video, be sure to smash that like button and keep on believing. How's it going, everyone? CJ from On The Grow here, and today I'm gonna to be sharing a quick tip about how we create our blackout domes. So this is quite easy. All you really need is Plasti Dip and a humidity dome of your choice. We use the tall ones for crops like corn and the short ones for other crops that we just wanna stretch out a little bit. So it's very easy. All you do is put four light coats of Plasti Dip over the top of this. And to see if you've darkened it enough, all you gotta do is take this and hold it up to a light source or the sun and see if you could see through it or not. And that is really all there is to it. I just wanna say, make sure you spray this on the outside only. Uh, and whenever you spray it, close off any vent holes that there might be uh, so it does not get on the inside because this is most likely not food safe. So you don't want this to be coming in contact with whatever you're growing inside of these domes. So just make sure that you get it on the outside only. Thanks so much, have a great day.